शुद्धो बुद्धो विमुक्त श्रुति शिखर गिरा मुख्यता भूमि यस्माजाद समस्त जगदिदमृदाप्य सर्व स्थित यहाँ शाम शाबार सुरनर भनजैर्क्षित तम भूमान मुकुंद हृदय गल कृष्ण में प्रपद्ये तम भूमान मुकुंद हृदय गल कृष्ण में प्रपद्ये मदीय हृदयाकाशे सदानंदमय गुरु उदय तो सतत सम्य स्वात्मानंद प्रबोधक हरि 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 ओम तत्स जय गुरु जय गुरु Have you given me a bag, sir? Yes, sir. Ashwin. Acha. Okay. No, now there is only one. <coughs> As usual, we shall have the Omkara recitation jointly three times. Interlock your fingers and put them on your lap. Sit comfortably erect. Close your eyes. Open the mouth and heart and join me. our recitation we intend to spread upon the whole of the earth and shower its benedictions on all creatures many of you perhaps don't know the creative power of the human mind mind is far above matter about the destructive and constructive power of matter you know already science and technology reveal it demonstrate it also but about the mind and its infinite potential and possibilities i don't think anybody speaks about much less thinks about <clears throat> this mind can be cultivated and all our invocations are meant to bring about the power of the mind empower the mind empower the intelligence this is where the human has got a freedom which no other creature upon the earth has i would like you to know it realize it and make use of it in a very constructive <coughs> and benevolent manner ऑल ऑफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू रिसाइड 
दिवि भूमो दिवि भूमो तथाकाशे तथाकाशे बहिरंदश्च बहिरंदश्च मे विभु मे विभु यो विभादि यो विभाति अवभासात्मा अवभासात्मा तस्मै तस्मै सर्वात्मने नमः सर्वात्मने नमः तस्मै सर्वात्मने नमः तस्मै सर्वात्मने नमः the gita shloka depicting arjuna's surrender and request before krishna following which krishna began to speak the real spiritual wisdom karpanya dosho bahata swabhava karpanya dosho bahata swabhava prachami tvam ृथाचेताेतास्ति in our culture whatever assessments and findings have been made are also followed you will find this is the last word in human life our vedantic upanishads they constitute the pinnacle of human thought investigation examination enquiry as well as finding there is nothing more to enquire into religiously it is god philosophically it is the supreme reality spiritually it is the self is there any other enquiry can you tell me we can enquire into the world we can enquire into ourselves we can enquire into the concept called god which is ours all words are made by us from our alphabet dog is our word god also is our word these words represent ideas these ideas as well as the words representing them we are the author and source of all communication so to explain god nobody else will come before you you have to explain it so when you think in this manner there are only three fundamental broad enquiries enquire into the objective world to find out what is the source singular source of it <coughs> try to find out another is what is the source of knowledge knowledge is something very distinct with the human you don't find it so pronounced in all the other beings if you tap the earth you will not get knowledge nor from water air fire and the space knowledge originates only from the human being and that too from his inside philosophy enquires into the source of knowledge it also enquires into the ultimate or supreme reality then we have another question we always say i and everything proceeds from me i see the world i designate and describe the world 
everything is my pronouncement my observation my finding so what is the source of one self these are the three broad inquiries all of them converge into one that is what india had discovered long back another discovery that india had made was the source of matter is knowledge ha <coughs> huh? huh? source of matter who says there is matter tell me does the matter say or you say it is your definition and description called matter material world object etc it is yours now if you enquire into matter who is enquiring man is enquiring externally it is the eyes but internally it is not eyes it is beyond matter the sphere of knowledge so when you go and observe matter through the microscope etc one scientist was telling me in delhi that we finally find it's all a particle then we find a wave ultimately there comes a stage when there is neither particle nor wave there is nothing to see when there is nothing to see tell me what survives the seer so in your observation what is the last factor that you arrive at why are you keeping quiet see you have nothing to see but all along you are seeing and in all the seeing process you are doing the process and the process was had something to see in the way of your object ultimately the object also becomes extinct but you survive in the same manner so in your quest what is the last factor it is yourself and what is that yourself i am it is a knowledge or is it a substance knowledge huh so knowledge is the source of matter jnana in shrimad bhagavatam there is a so there is a verse in the very beginning you know what is that verse i have been projecting it in our shrimad bhagavata tattva samiksha satram right from the beginning as a backdrop it was there <clears throat> a set of scholars including ascetics celebrated pandits erudite people ascetics and all of them were there then suda a greatly enlightened man they are called they they do the articulation of all our puranas and epic and other literature so they asked him <clears throat> you have read the vedas shastras itihasas itihasa means epics and puranas in all of them in all of them can you tell us what is the essence that you have met Suda had no qualms he simply said vadandi tat tatva vidaha tatvam yajnana madvayam brahmedi paramatmedi bhagavan iti shabdyate can you write it there <clears throat> vadandi tat tatva vidaha tatvam yajnana madvayam ब्रह्मेति परमात्मेति भगवान इति शब्द्यते वुड यू रिपीट इफ आई से दिस वदन्ति तत् वदन्ति तत् वदन्ति तत् वदन्ति तत् तत्त्वविदः तत्त्वविदः तत्त्वं यद् तत्त्वं यद् ज्ञानमद्वयम् आई कैन नॉट से Mm. it is in the beginning vadandi tat tatva vidaha ah the number suddenly reduced vadandi tat tatva vidaha vadandi tat tatva vidaha tatvam yajnana madvayam tatvam yajnana madvayam brahmedi 
ಪರಮಾತ್ಮೇದಿ ಭಗವಾನಿ ಶಬ್ದೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೇದಿ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮೇದಿ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇದು ಶಬ್ದೆ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ರೈಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ಯಾಲಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಲಿಸನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ವದಂದಿ ತತ್ ತತ್ವವಿದ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸಾಮಿನಿಂಗ್ ರೇಷಿಯೋಸಿನೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ಚಿಂಗ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚಿಂಗ್ ಫೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಇವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯುಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಸೆಸಿಂಗ್ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ all these are the exercises of the intelligence so people who are given to all this they say vadandi tat tatva vidaha those people who knowledge the truth the supreme truth they say tattvam yajnana madvayam tattvam yajnana madvayam it is a tat the trouble is when it is shown there all of you will look at the board i want you to look at me <laughs> otherwise you will miss the talk that is why i am i am not at all inclined to show anything in the board because i it is not the words alone i say i am explaining it so if your attention is there what is the point in my talking dutra vadandi tat tatva vidaha people who know the truths they say what tattvam yajnana madvayam what is that tattva which is called advaya jnana you know whatever the mind refers to and the intelligence refers to it can never be a material article am i clear yes. ha huh? say infinity you say is it anything material or physical you say zero a nothing what is that it is a concept we call it a pratyaya something that the mind or the intelligence postulates and you can understand it only in the sphere of the mind and the intelligence what is infinity can you explain it no what is zero if you divide any figure by zero that figure becomes infinity whether it is 1 or 100 1000 or a million and when you multiply any figure by zero it becomes zero so what is this wonderful zero so infinity it is a concept so ultimately it is a tattva tattva what is that tattva jnana madvayam jnana madvayam the jnana which is non dual non dual what does it mean knowledge becomes dual when it refers to two two things which are the two one is the subject and the subject trying to know or knows the object so it is arising in the context of a relationship called the subject and object am i talking sense yes. or it's all greek ha huh? so in our in our assessment all knowledge is based upon subject and object what is the world the world is something that we experience we see we perceive that surrounds us so every form of knowledge is an outcome is an outcome before the knower an outcome that arises as a result of the knowing process am i clear ha huh? i want to know so i initiate the knowing process and that process arrives at a certain outcome that outcome is called knowledge is there any matter involved here ha huh? no. is there any object involved here no. 
So when you analyze knowledge properly, you will find the knowledge is always non-dual. I told you that the mind employs the eyes and it tries to see a tree. So the light rays falling on the tree get reflected, strike the cornea. Then electrical pulses go to the brain center. An image is formed. It is that image that you see and not the tree. Is it clear? Yes. Or will you have doubt? No. Even your own body. You don't see it as an object at all. You see the imprint of your body in your mind. And who, who causes the imprint? The mind. And what is the imprint? Mind's own mental imprint. So in the whole process of seeing an object, you tell me, is there anything other than the subject involved? Kya? Boli na chasa. I wanted to know. I started the knowing process. Maybe I located a tree before the eyes. Then I formed an imprint. And that imprint is what I am seeing. So it is the seer whose seeing process results in an imprint. So the seer, the seeing process and the imprint, are they all the subject or any object is there? Is there any matter there? No. Huh? No. This is the truth. So Sudha says, Vadanditat tattva vidaha tattvam yat jnanam advayam It is that non-dual knowledge which takes away the distinctions between subject and the object. It is called actually tribudi in our language. The seer the seeing process and the seen, the three. The three will disappear. It's all one, one, one. I cannot call it a substance. It's all one supreme consciousness. When you are able to understand this kind of a non-dual nature of knowledge, that non-dual knowledge is called Brahmedi, the supreme reality called Brahman, Paramatmedi, the supreme self, Bhagavan iti shabdhyade. Even the word God is actually referring to this non-dual knowledge. Don't you think it is a very, very pronounced information? Huh? Dunya mein kuch hai. I don't know whether you are reading my signs of inner redemption in our journal. Vichar Sedu. There is nothing other than knowledge in you throughout the 24 hours of the day. No matter at all. Even when you say matter, is it not a word that you have coined? Huh? Where is this word coined? Who coins the word? And that coinage is where? So it is the mind that coins. And the coined thing is also the mind. So that non dwell when the subject-object distinctions vanish and you understand that everything is beyond the subject and the object, one knowing process and outcome alone are there. When you are able to understand it in this way, it becomes your non dual knowledge. That non dual knowledge is called the Supreme Reality Brahman the source of everything. That is what you call I, the Self. And that is what you call God. Kabhi suna hai? Kon bolega? Satya hi hai. E Shriman Bhagavat mein lagaya hai. And that too in the beginning. With a beautiful forerunner. What is that? A number of scholars, including ascetics, celebrated Brahmins, sages, <clears throat> scholars, they asked Sutta, you are well read, well read. You have read the Vedas and the Upanishads, the Idhihasas, the epics, the Puranas. Let us know what is the essence. Without any doubt, he says this. So what is God, my dear souls? 
it is the non-dual knowledge that arises in a human being individually in his inside. That knowledge is not matter, not matter. But when you try to trace the source of matter, you will only end up with your own consciousness. This is something very, very important. Now, Sri Krishna was discussing this Sankhya to begin with and with a reference to the Self. What did he say? There was no time I was not. You were not. Bhishma, Drona and the others were not. And there is not going to be a time when we shall not be. See? He took the I as the subject of discussion and he says, this I was not non-existent any time. It exists now. It expresses now. Having existed, existing now, it will never cease to be existent. This is what he began from. This is called the Sankhya Yoga. Upanishad Vidya. The Upanishad speaks only about the Self. Only about the Self. And the Self is given two names. One is Self, another is Brahman. One is Atma, when it is located within your body. Otherwise it is Brahman, located everywhere. So this is the discussion. And that discussion can only be done by what? Buddhi. By positing one statement after the other. One postulate after the other. Here he says, it was not born. It is not going to die. As it is present now, it was and it will be. This is how he began. It was only for the ears to hear and the intelligence to think, reflect upon. No other factor is involved there at all. Your own inner mind and inner, intel inner intelligence, they alone are involved in the pursuit. That's Sankhya. Now he says, I will now tell you yoga. The word used is yoga. Lakshmi Narayan? Where is he? <coughs> yoga. Esha tebihita sanghe buddhir yoga etvimam shrunu buddhya yukto yaya partha Karma Bandham Prahasyasi. Karma Bandham Prahasyasi. Follow the statement. It's a very small group, so I'm trying to discuss it well. Esha te Abhita Sankhya. In the field of Sankhya, I have spoken to you this much. What is that? There was no time when I was not. You were not. Bhishma, Drona and the others were not. There is not going to be a time when we shall cease to be. We are ever present. Ever present. Ever present. Are you following me? Yes. At least do you like to hear? Yes. Then you will realize it. If you like it, then you are the fit person. No other qualification is there. <coughs> Now, this is solely a mental intellectual pursuit. There is no ritual, no ceremony, no puja, no worship. Nothing is there. You hear the truth, especially from the teacher or from the shastras you read. That reading is the first factor or listening. Thereafter it is introspection, introspection, introspection. So in the whole of Sankhya pursuit, it is a knowledge pursuit, a voyage of knowledge. One's own inner intelligence is the sole factor being employed. Do you understand? That is why people take up sannyasa. Why? Remaining in the household, they can never do it. 
Suppose you start doing it, wife will be the first person to object to it. Then why did you marry me? You go. She will not say, if you want to pursue it, yes, go. I shall also come. When my brother Swamiji, Purushottam Swamiji, when I took up sannyasa and went from Calcutta, he was very much surprised and affected. But we were discussing it, writing letters, talking to him. So he said, when I saw you in this form, it also affected me. So he wrote to me, I am also prepared to go to a much farther extent in this line than you imagine me to be capable of. So in a matter of one year or so, he decided to take up sannyasa. His Srimadhi also said, I also take up. They had three children studying in high schools. So what should a wife normally say if she is a wife? What should he say? You tell me, women. Oh, you find it acceptable. Like Maitreyi told Yajjamalikya. Then I also. Actually, the wedding itself is done on that promise. Dharmecha, Arthecha, Kamecha, Mokshecha, Anujarami. They say that. That is how they marry. I follow you in the first Purushartha Dharma, in the second Purushartha Wealth, in the third Purushartha Gratification of Desire, and in the fourth Purushartha Moksha. There was a Sharma, person, Sharma by name, an Andhraite. He was an engineer. He got initiated from Shingiri Mat also. He started doing sadhana intensely. He found a new meaning, purpose, and job, uh, ecstasy, acceleration, etc. So uh, one day he told his wife, I am going. If you want to follow me, I have no objection. But you entrust the children to your mother's care. You know what she did? She simply took the children and gave them to the care of the mother, explaining the situation and followed him. Both of them went to Amarkandak, the source of Narmada. It is a forest area. Such an educated man, they went there. They cannot be initially beggars. And nobody's mind will agree. So holding on to his spirituality, resolve, etc. They started remaining. They had nothing to eat. So they plucked leaves from the tree and started eating. Seeing that the villagers from immediately they started reaching the food two times a day. And this Sarmaji had one child. <coughs> he was named Markandeya. And the child was playing. Sometimes he will go over the bridge. So people used to ask him, when he plays in the bridge, why are you not going to help him? He may fall. If he is supposed to fall, he will fall. Otherwise not, he said. What are you saying? India is great, Baba. It is not the India that you see in the television. No, not at all. This knowledge has reached the nooks and corners of India. Everywhere it has reached. Is there a place when Ramayana is not there? Where? <coughs> so, this is a pursuit exclusively to be pursued by the intelligence. By the intelligence. That means, if you have to read, understand, research, meditate, contemplate, etc., then secular interests will not appeal to you. So, you become a recluse. So the Sankhya, he explained, it is called Upanishad Vidya. That Upanishad Vidya is to be pursued only in the form of introspection, introspection, introspection. Every one of you is introspecting, all professionals, managers particularly. But you are introspecting over your professional pursuit, market conditions, etc., etc. 
here the introspection is a truthful introspection which is to me meant to bring about reformation refinement attunement harmony etc in the very mind intelligence duo the difference between the two all worldly people also are introspective but that introspection is for a secular purpose on secular factors here it is on the inner factors inner factors on the i on the ego on the mind on the intelligence trying to explore and discover their dimensions their magnitude their potential their possibilities say one question when i take up what answer do you have to give we all want to be joyous joyous in this world if you are prosperous the result of prosperity mental result of prosperity is you are comfortable and feel contented is it not you tell me this contentment is it objective or physical no contentment is an emotion as an emotion it belongs to the mind so what is the source of contentment keeping the mind where are you looking for so are you not a fool of an ass in looking for contentment from the objects answer me rationally it is your word contentment it is your word mind and if you mean by contentment that contentment is a feeling it's an emotion emotion does not belong to matter or the body or the senses it belongs to the mind so keeping the mind with you what are you trying to do for contentment run about all over the world ha huh? have you any answer this is called sankhya this is sankhya sankhya will never allow you to be a pseudo human it will never allow you to be adulterated in your pursuit there is a self rectification in that it will not allow you to be an imposter to be a hypocrite don't say i want peace and live a callous secular life peace comes it is a treasure of the mind so try to handle your mind give it the grace of disciplines reformation study it with beautiful jewels of discipline decorate it decorate it decorate it allow it to become moderate be discreet be discriminating you eat your food you have your life sleep everything is okay but in the mind and the intelligence level you cannot carry a wrong conviction tell me whether the body is transitory or non transitory let us see whether the earth is transitory or eternal one day the sun is going to become cold it will become cold you and i may not be alive the fluid which is transforming itself into heat and light will be exhausted one day by the process of transformation so the sun will become cold do you accept it or not yes. ha huh? yes. what is there non transforming our body is transforming transitory are you interested in the transitory or the everlasting yes. what should you be interested in yes. where is the everlasting is there anywhere outside no. if it is inside don't you have an inside is it far away from you like the sun and the moon or is it closest to you why don't you close your eyes and look here and find out start dancing eureka ha ha make no mistake make no mistake at all <clears throat> so arjuna arjuna was tempted 
such a beautiful state this exclusive mentor intellectual pursuit should i not opt for it should i think of fighting here this kind of a thought arose so he said so far i have spoken to you of sankhya now i will tell you about yoga buddhya yukto yaya partha karma bandham prahasisi coupled with this buddhi i don't know whether you would follow me what is this yoga that is also an intellectual proposition it is adopting a certain refinement a certain perspective a certain perception evaluation insight so buddhya yukto yaya partha karma bandham prahasisi i will now tell you the karmic pursuit by virtue of which you will overcome overcome the colossal fear of sin about this world i told you already vyavasayaatmika buddhi rekeha guru nandana in this karma yoga the intelligence has to become resolute in its assessment about matters see these are all very important statements with where is the time for me to say he brings a beautiful example yavan artha udapane sarvada samplutodage tavan sarveshu vedeshu brahmanasya vijanatah you know arjuna what is this wonderful spiritual pursuit it is something like all places getting flooded with water when the whole place is flooded with water will you look for a cup of water a bucket of water anywhere from will there be a need for a well a tank or a river you don't have to draw water from a bucket through a bucket everywhere is flooded similarly purne manasi sampurnam jagat sarvam sudhadravaihi when the mind becomes purna and full the entire world is filled with sudhadravaihi nectarine flow you don't have to bring nectar and pour it everywhere the mind has to become purna when the mind becomes full fullness becomes extensive and overflowing from you upanad gudha padasya nanu charma astrada eva bhu if you want to have a leather everywhere spread wherever you walk because there are pebbles and disturbing elements what do you do go and buy from the market no wear two slippers and walk wherever you go the earth is covered with the same material that you are wearing as slippers so make the mind full the world becomes full it becomes nectarine so yavan artha udapane sarvada sampludodage tavan sarveshu vedeshu brahmanasya vijanada so the celebrated brahmana by virtue of knowing and realizing the brahman he finds he finds blissfulness flowing everywhere he transforms the world into a blissful forum am i talking sense or nonsense ha huh? see the key lies in your mind operate it drop all your desires drop all your wrong notions have a clear insight be simple simple innocent noble then you will become great and glorious <clears throat> so arjuna was very much tempted then he says my dear arjuna your competence is not 
for taking up this exclusive wisdom path, introspectional path. You have come here, equipping yourself with Pashupadastra, Gandiva, etc., ambitious of fighting this war and becoming more glorious as an illustrious fighter. Such a man beaming with war enthusiasm, suddenly on listening to me, he says, I will become a recluse. Impossible, he said. Impossible. Your competence is only to remain active. Be involved in the world. You are a Kshatriya. You have to establish peace and order and propriety everywhere. Unless people like you strive for it, who else will? Can the police people run away from any place? Huh? But there was an instance when somebody was murdered, they ran away. <laughs> Let people run away. They have to remain there. Otherwise they are not a police at all. Even the wife should abandon him. What is this? You are a Kshatriya. You have come here. Those people are confronting you. Counter them. So such a person, after listening to me, says, I will leave. <coughs> That's not right. It's not right. <coughs> and then he started speaking about it. Karmanyevadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana ma karma phalehedur bhuhu madhe sangostva karmani. You cannot be non active. At the same time, when you act, do not be vitiated by the alternating results of what you do. Just like when sense and sensory objects contact, sukha and dukha alternates will come one after the other. When you are acting, intended to bring about a certain result, invariably the result will be achieved. But there are occasions when the result will not be achieved. Even recently to relieve the people who were entrapped in the tunnel, just imagine, my throat was choked when I was reading it. See, what can they say? They went, they bored. They found a steel, a, met a metal plate there. And two drills were broken. And laborers had to remain there, patiently remove everything. Somehow they reached. <coughs> Was it small job? What is this? Tasmad Udyamavan Bhava. You have to be always striving, 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 persevering, persevering, endeavoring, endeavoring. <coughs> You are countered here. Can you abandon it? What is human material for? Is it to eat and sleep? Even animals don't do so. How is it that we humans can agree to do it? We have to be always striving, striving. So don't be deterred by any kind of a result, positive or negative. Equip the mind. How? Arjuna asked. So here what he says, Yoga sthat kuru karmani sangam tiktva dhananjaya siddhya siddhyo samo bhutva samatvam yoga uchyade. Yoga sthat kuru karmani sangam tiktva dhananjaya siddhya siddhyo samo bhutva samatvam yoga uchyade. There what Krishna said, Sukha dukhe same kritva. Are you following me? Let you have equipoise in Sukha and Dukkha. Here, the same equipoise you have in Siddhi and Asiddhi. So where is the difference now? So what is Karma Yoga? Karma Yoga is not doing Karma. Everybody is doing. The Karma Yogi is not doing anything additional or special. But he does his Karma with Yoga Buddhi. With yogic enrichment. What is that yoga enrichment? Siddhya Siddhyo Samo Bhutva. Say that. You go on performing. 
that performance is intended to bring about a certain result and if you perform well the result will and surely appear but there are factors which may interfere not often but rarely at least so there may be an adverse result or partial result or no result at all our women conceive they are supposed to the, the fetus is supposed to grow complete its growth and come out of the womb at the time of delivery but there are occasions when miscarriage takes place can you rule it out if one miscarriage has taken place don't make a huge jumbo about it <laughs> nature is trying to produce the best of the embryo somewhere something went wrong so nature pushed it out encourage nature stand by her side wait take the necessary disciplines conceive again itna shor bajane ke liye kya hai everything is very simple and easy why are you worried this world is not designed by us it is not maintained by us can you imagine inside the mother's womb without the knowledge of the mother or anybody else for that matter a fetus is growing and how many organs it builds and all in a process of a few weeks and a full embryo a full child gets born to interact with the huge and infinitely various world where can you find a similar performance you tell me huh should you marvel at it or should you become sorrowful what is this enhance your wisdom become wiser 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 use your intelligence use your mind by crying nothing is achieved you can cry as a relief like urination i can say use the tear gland fairly well there is no harm very good it will help you also <coughs> so here the samabuddhi is related to siddhi and asiddhi there it was related to sukha and dukha so tell me in substance is there any difference between karma yoga and sankhya yoga huh no. hmm? no. it is the samatva buddhi that matters <coughs> krishna completed completed <coughs> the second chapter arjuna heard him well asked some beautiful questions on sthita pratyaya and sthitadi i have no time to explain it now then in the second chapter he said esha abraham hi sthiti partha नैनाम प्राप्य विमुख्यदी स्थित्वा सियाम अंतकाली भी ब्रह्म निर्वाण मृच्छति आई हैव कंप्लीटेड माय सांख्या एंड कर्म योगा प्रोपोजिशंस फॉलो दिस इवन इफ यू आर एबल टू प्रैक्टिस इट एट द एंड ऑफ योर लाइफ यू विल अटेन ब्रह्म निर्वाण नॉट दैट यू शुड स्टार्ट प्रैक्टिसिंग इट राइट फ्रॉम द बिगिनिंग ऐसा तो कुछ नहीं है यू मे अटेन इट एट द फैग एंड ऑफ योर लाइफ इवन देन यू विल गेट ब्रह्म निर्वाण ही कंप्लीट then krishna arjuna says jayasi jet karmanaste mada buddhir janardana tat kim karmani ghore mam niyojayasi keshava krishna you speak so magnificently about sankhya yoga you also described the enlightened person who finds a flood of ecstasy everywhere if that is the goal of human life should i not instantly instantly resolve to pursue that path you say no you don't have the necessary competence you should be only active and interactive for the time being together with activity and interaction you pursue the path of spiritual equipoise why are you asking me to fight this fierce and colossal war arjuna's question so krishna continues to speak logesmin vividha nishtha pura prokta mayanaga 
in the whole world particularly in the human world dvidha nishtha this spiritual path has always remained the same singular path but in two phases dvidha the nishtha the pursuit is only one but it remains twofold you can say jnana yoga na sankhya nam karma yoga na yogina ba people who are very intelligent and who are challenged by intellectual pursuits intellectual achievements for them it remains jnana yoga karma yoga na yogina for the others who are involved in the world they are interacting acting for them karma yoga is the way the content of two is the same the goal of the two is the same the practitioner also in a way is the same it is the human personality that takes up the practice in the jnana yogi he also has a body with five senses one mind one intelligence one ego the karma yogi also has the same personality with the same senses mind intelligence and ego <clears throat> there is no difference at all it is that samatva buddhi samatva buddhi samatva buddhi see you can i don't know whether you will appreciate my statement a good football player or a cricket player should he always think of victory take a business man one business man who can survive only me when he makes always profit another business man he says whether it is profit or loss i am prepared to assimilate both which business man is better the second similarly a footballer i will play fell but it's not one man game besides me there are 21 people so i will play well whether it is success or failure if it is success our team has played better if it is failure then the other team has played better should i not give a place for it so what is the real flexible mind you tell you always win <laughs> is it ever possible suppose they draw the football game then what do the referee say what does the referee say he says penalty kick the first set equal then again hit again and <laughs> one is made to lose see so a game means losing as well as winning our mind should be flexible then you will find your strokes and performance are better otherwise you will be nervous so many people are watching ठीक नहीं होगा Unfortunately, people don't understand. <clears throat> devotion has a great place in our culture. In devotion, primarily and even later, it is worship, worship. In the North India, there is chappanna bhog. <laughs> God is given, is it not fifty-six items? <laughs> I one day wanted to see this bhog. <laughs> I went there. Finally, they gave me also a little. <laughs> i had also <laughs> see pleasing god pleasing god by what so krishna speaks about it very well would you like to hear yes huh? the first worship is patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayachadi tadaham bhakti upahrdam asnami prayatatmana common worship very simple even a dog can be made to do it it does not require human being collecting flowers throwing them one after the other before an idol next day removing them what have you done additionally you have plucked all the flowers and destroyed them and you gave here what have you done but it is worship so krishna says if this flower worship has to be meaningful i have to say something he says patram pushpam phalam toyam yo me bhaktya prayachadi 
the article does not matter you can take a leaf a flower a fruit or simply a spoonful of water i don't want anything else at all after all all these things are my gift why are you giving them to me i don't have a stomach to eat i don't have hunger i am not looking for your silk and your crown can anybody put a crown on the all providing boli na thoda if you are pleased you do it i have no objection so what is it that i look for yo me bhaktiya prayachari whatever article you give it should be smeared with devotion where is devotion is it a material product outside the body or it is an emotional refinement within your body boliye na thoda ha so you have to generate devotion and smear it when you smear it be smear it with devotion that devotion i accept i never partake of your material never touch it whether the offerer has smeared it with devotion and given to me is the only question tad aham bhakti upakritam asnami prayatatmana provided the offerer the offerer has the grace has the grace has the ornament of discipline and refinement he cannot be an unbridled man he should be a prayatatma he should have regulated senses moderated mind and purified intelligence he must have he must have humility to adorn his ego only when this refinement is there i accept this devotion not otherwise don't you think there is sufficient clue and direction here now mind you you are worshiping god which god god who is present everywhere so think about who is this god yatah pravrtihi bhutanam yena sarvam idam tadam swakarmanatam abhyarchya siddhim bindati manavah in worship what is happening you are active for 16 to 17 hours of the day you take hardly half an hour and you make an offer to god what about the remaining 23 and a half hours of the day ha huh? here you are devoted there boli na ha and whom are you worshiping this worship covers god because god is everywhere so what is that worship which will be to to the all pervading god he says think about it yadah pravrtih bhutana god is the source from which all activities all things in this world proceed every form of vibration movement activity interaction the source from where all these are proceeding yena sarvam idam tadam and that presence by which all are equally pervaded and permeated so now what is the measure of god tell me is it this the idol what about here think of it and then what should you do stop doing your special offer and make a general and full offer what is that swakarmana tamabhyarsya what say that swakarmana tamabhyarsya bolo by whatever act you do worship any word that comes out of your mouth any thought emerging from the mind any understanding emerging from the intelligence all of them should be equally directed towards god as a dedicated offering 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 swakarmanaadam abhyarsya 
then the devotion become becomes extensive and it covers the whole day am i clear dekh lijiye na kahan dekhenge aap where will you find such statements search the whole world you will not find swakarmana tam abhyarchya siddhim bindadi manava then he will attain siddhi not by this tukda 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 to begin with it's okay but not to proceed with he does not stop there he does not stop there ishvara sarvabhutanam hridesha arjuna tishtadi brahmayan sarvabhutani yantrarudhani mayaya my dear men and women at least sometime you should think whom am i worshiping where is this god what is his dimension where is he present let me think of him after himself not after myself when you think about it ishwaraha sarvabhutanam hridesha arjuna tishtadi god is seated in the heart of everyone arjuna kya ho gaya तब ईश्वर को देखने के लिए हमको कहा जाना है कहीं पर जाना है या एक ही स्थान पर बैठकर आंखों को बंद करके भीतर देखना है बोलिए ना कभी देखते हैं आप लोग भीतर दैट इज रिसर्व फॉर समबड़ी एल्स यदा प्रवृत्तिर भूता नो ईश्वर सर्वभूता हृदयशर्जुन तिष्ठति भ्रामयन सर्वभूतानी यंत्रारूढ़ा मया द होल यूनिवर्स इज बीइंग रिवॉल्ड बाय हिम नॉट बाय पुशिंग द सर्कमफरेंस ऑफ द व्हील बट मूविंग इट फ्रॉम द पिवट जस्ट लाइक यूर कार्स आर बीइंग ड्रिवन वेयर फ्रॉम इज द मूवमेंट कमिंग hridesha in the heart of the being he is seated and he is making everyone revolve as if mounted on a machine therefore how should you worship tameva sharanam gacha seek refuge under him alone alone where हृदयशे अर्जुन धिष्टति तमेव शरण गच्छा हाउ विल यू रीच हिम वाट विल यू डेडिकेट कैन यू टेक एन आर्टिकल एंड पुश इट थ्रू द माउथ ऑफ द नोस हा सर्व भाव भारत वर्षिप हिम बाय एवरी प्रोडक्ट ऑफ युअर माइंड every product of your intelligence every product of your ego aap log samajhte hain kya meri bhasha yes ha thoda sojhi na worship him with every product of your mind if it is anger worship him with anger worship him with jealousy worship him with fondness worship him with competition you will find in a few days all these vanish and you will be absolutely pure and immaculate but you should offer the products of your mind and heart to the indwelling god my dear god you are generating this you are the source of it and i don't find anybody else except you to offer these to sarva bhavena not by prema by love alone love hatred everything sarva bhavena bharata tat prasadat param shantim sthanam prapsyasi shashvatam by his blessing by his favorableness you will attain the everlasting abode boliye kitna kasht hai kasht hai ya हा क्या चुप रहते हैं क्यों बाजार में जाने की आवश्यकता नहीं अपने भीतर जो कुछ उत्पन्न होता है सभी का समर्पण करना चाहिए 
Make God responsible for everything in your life. Whatever is the behavior of your mind, hold him responsible. Ask him to set it right. Nobody else is going to set it right for you. There is no source also. Identify everything with him. Offer everything to him. And remain away from. Away from. Never pretend. Never boast. Never be proud. Never claim. Nothing. Be a beautiful zero. So that you can become a hero. Now, Bhagavad Gita gives a few promises. This is very important. Krishna gives, Bhagavad Gita gives. The first promise is, Svalpam apyasya dharmasya trayade mahato bhayad. You may all feel spirituality is hard, very difficult. Shuru karne se kap samapt hoga, is janme hoga ya nahi. All these doubts you have. He says, no. Even a small measure of this practice is ample enough to take away all fear from your mind. Svalpam apyasya dharmasya. This wonderful dharma called Sankhi Yoga or Karma Yoga, even Bhakti Yoga is called Karma Yoga. Because Bhakta offers all his activity to God. So the activity part is there. So he says, Svalpam apyasya dharmasya. Trayade mahato bhayat. The greatest fear is overcome by this small measure of practice. So tell me, is it not a very good insurance? Yes, yes. And how much money do you have to pay as premium? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Trayade mahato bhayat. When Krishna explained the meditation in the sixth chapter, Arjuna heard and he said, My dear Lord, my dear Krishna, this controlling the mind is becoming very difficult. It is like controlling wind. So in this, can all people succeed? If they are not able to succeed, what will happen? Will it not be like the clouds unable to shed water? Suddenly the wind blows and everything is blown off skelter-skelter. So he says, no, no. Are you hearing me? Yes. Parthana iveha namutra vinashas tasya vidyade nahi kalyana kritkashit durgadim tata gachari. What a wonderful assurance. I think you should write it on your, in your house. Write it on the board. No extent of policies will be able to ensure safety for you. Neither in this world nor in the other world. A man who has taken up the yoga practice as I have mentioned. <clears throat> any destruction for him. Nahi kalyana kritkashchidi turgadim tata A man who is given to a benign and benevolent act of any kind whatsoever, he will not attain an adverse plight. Nahi kalyana Are you doing something noble, good, benevolent? There should be no harm either to you or to the others. Possibly if you can help, still better. But avoiding harm, if you are wishing for the welfare of all people, that is called Kalyana Karma. Such a man will never meet an adverse plight. Is it not sufficient insurance, assurance and salvation for all of you? Huh? Yes. What more do you want? By any extent of security measures, you will never be secure. Real security will come from here alone. And finally, to top everything, Sarva Karmanya Bisada Kurvano Madhyapashraya Mat Prasada Avapnodi Shashwadam Padamavya. 
You see, I can say this, explain it. Will not have any effect. You have to hear it, remember it, nurture it. Repeat it at least hundreds and thousands of times in your mind. Then the difference will be there. Sarva karmanya bhisada kurvano madhya bhashreha. He says, don't distinguish at all anything like dharma, adharma and all that. Sarva karmanya bhisada. Always be doing all kinds of your activities. Madhya bhashreha. But, but, but. Are we not already doing all kinds of activity in our life? Huh? Everything we do, all things we do. So in the doing there is no lack. Then where is the lack? Madhya Bhashreha. You are not taking refuge and rest on God. Even when you eat, you should be resting in God and then eating. How are you eating? To appease the hunger. Who generated the hunger? Have you done anything to generate hunger for you? You may do many things for preparing food to appease the hunger. But can you generate hunger? No. So who generates biologically the hunger? God. Who makes the heart beat? Lungs bellow? Pancreas function? Liver function? Huh? So all activities you perform. But how? Madhya Bhashreha. You should have total dependence and reliance on God. That one element is the only additional factor. If it happens, then mat prasada avapnodi shashvatam padamavyam. By my favorableness, I will become favorable to you. I will become happy, contented about you. And you will attain the shashvatam avyam padam. The in, interminable abode you will achieve. Only one class, Madhya Bhashreya. Develop a reliance on God, dependence on God. The whole world, the earth is resting on God. Then are you not resting? Then how do you draw a line set? The earth is resting on God, but I am resting in myself. Are you able to hear and apply? I call it this beautiful mathematics. Everything is listed. One word is fitted into the other. That word is fitted into the third. Sarva karmanya bisada kurvano madhya bhashaya mat prasada avapnodi shashvatam padam avyam. Is se jada ham kya chate? You know what is, what am I feeling? I, am, I have started speaking about it. Previously I would not speak like this. I am ashamed to say God. What? I am? <laughs> All of you are surprised. Because God alone is. If you make a reference to Him, is it right? Is it necessary? Do you ever make a reference to you? I am, I am, I am. Do you tell your mother, you are my mother, you are my mother, you are my mother? God alone is. Then why should you make a reference to him? You don't have to remember God because you say I. I is actually denoting God. So as long as you say I, are you remembering God or forgetting him? So where is the necessity? In this way, my dear souls, you can transcend all constrictions, preferences, prejudices, divisional outlook and be restful in that uniform, singular, wholesome vision. Hoga? Hoga to jiru. Mujhe hoga kya? Dusre ko ho sakta.
Many people try to sing about God and cry. I always say, why this crying and singing? God is very blissful and kalyana rubi. So when we sing of God, sing God, about God, should we not be smiling? Huh? <laughs> I think you should open a new chapter. <laughs> Tell him that I want to smilingly call you. Don't make me cry. <laughs> you can speak anything to God. Anything to God. I suggest to people, stop all other kinds of worship. Start talking to Him from wherever you are. From the bathroom, from the toilet, from the bedroom, from the kitchen, from the drawing room, while doing anything whatsoever. Talk to Him. He becomes very close, very near. And by talking you will expose all your, express all your emotions. So the best communication is talk to Him, talk to Him, talk to Him. So you will find several hours of communication. But by doing puja in the puja room, <laughs> you do for half an hour, close it and say, don't come along with me. <laughs> I have to do many things, please. And till I open, you should not. <laughs> this is what we are doing. Bhagavan to sundar hai na? <laughs> okay. See, I always express my concern that I speak and make ideas clear for you. But the remaining part is to be done by you. That manana is the very important point. About this manana, I have something interesting to tell you. One day, one of my devotees from Delhi called me, Swamiji, <clears throat> I have been doing my meditation and all that, everything. But I can do many things I am capable of doing. But I am not able to do because I don't have commitment and dedication. I laughed. <laughs> I started laughing. Now, can you tell me to bring about, to grow commitment and dedication, what should be done? That is where I started laughing. So sometimes <laughs> I laugh uncontrollably. <laughs> My stomach starts paining. So after laughing, I told him, okay, I shall tell you something. Will you do it? Don't tell me anything in return. I will tell you what you should do. I said, go on saying commitment, commitment. I want to be committed, committed, commitment, 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 commitment. Go on saying this thousands and thousands of times. Similarly, dedicated, dedicated. I want to be dedicated, 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 dedicated. So he, and tell, and told him, you bring me back after four or five days. So within four or five days, he started saying, Swamiji, I have become dedicated and committed. <laughs> it seems this man also speaks about this to some of his known people. One other youngster came to me the other day and said, see, I am very much in association with X. So he told me, my profession is such that I have to read too much. Read a lot, understand a lot. So that focus should be there. <clears throat> I told him good reading means elimination. You have to eliminate a lot. Then only you will be able to focus on what is necessary. So he said, I have been saying focus, 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 focus. You know what he told me? 1100 hours I have said this. Now you decide what should be done by you. This is the story of Delhi. 1100 hours he says. He was asking me, can you tell me something whereby my whole intelligence will remain focused? Yes, I can tell you what should be done for that. So this manana is very important. Any quality you can grow, only when you love that quality, think about it. If you think about it, 50 mind hours, the quality will be yours. 50 mind hours. I wanted to put it 100, so people will be a little... <laughs> 
So I have made it 50 mind hours on equality. Any quality. See, we are supposed to grow mentally every day, every hour. Every hour, every day, we must be enriched by what we do. And we should enrich the world by what we do. Okay, I will stop. Achha. Samvedya varjita manuttama megama adhyam Samvitpadam vikalanam kalayan mahatman Hrudhye vatishtha Kalanarehida kriyamdu Kurvan agartrupadame etya Samohudida shri Kurvan agartrupadame etya Samohudida shri Hari 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 Om Das We shall have the conclusional Omgara Take your pose for it Oh, that's Jaguar. Jaguar.